say, if I didn't have my friends around me during this tough time, I'd be struggling so badly. But they've kept me going and keeping myself positive and making them happy as well through this tough time because a lot of people don't understand what's going on. So my job is, as a friend to all of them, just to make them smile, keep them going and keep myself going really. Hello and welcome to the Langdon On Air Digital Dinner with me, writer and short-lived internet sensation, 10.1 million hits on Twitter alone, Ivor Vadil. Yes, I am predominantly a writer, which begs the obvious question, why am I presenting this? Well, it's actually quite a funny story. I got a phone call a little while ago from uh, Neil Taylor. He rang me up and he said, Ivor, we're organising this uh, On Air Digital Dinner and we'd love you to, at which point I just I jumped in, sort of cut him off, interrupted him and said, yep, I'll do it which was a little premature, because what he was going on to say was, we'd love you to ring your brother and ask him to do it. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, the keener eyed amongst you might have spotted that things are slightly different this year. I haven't spotted it, but apparently last year you were all having dinner in a room together. I mean, as if. Um, but listen, we really appreciate you being here in a virtual way. We really do appreciate it. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, now, as they say in showbiz, we have a packed programme tonight. We really do. There's loads and loads coming up. And the great news is, I am not the only host. I know. Thank goodness. Um, sharing the hostly duties with me, someone many of you might know. He's been the Toastmaster at the dinner for the last two years. Uh, he's a Langdon member and he is Mamma Mia Super Trooper, Ben Brahams. Over to you, Ben. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Langdonites, welcome to this wonderful dinner. Thank you, Langdon. Thank you, Ben. So, what has life been like for Langdon over the past few months? Well, I could tell you, but I don't really know. So, we came up with the genius idea of asking dinner chairman Nigel Henry to tell you instead. Nigel, over to you. A bit of a year, and we've learned a lot this year, and we've learned a lot from our members. Uh, during this pandemic, it's been frightfully difficult for everybody, but for our members, uh, it's, it's been pretty horrific at times. However, with many, they've been exceptionally resilient. They have looked after each other immensely. It's been, it's been quite incredible. And I, I would say, actually, uh, and I've used this word before, but I, I, I use it even more strongly this year. They have been absolutely inspirational, certainly for me to see and other uh, volunteers involved with Langdon. Uh, how they have managed. Some have gone home with their families. I think there's been an enormous amount of fear, and understandably. Uh, so some returned, some have stayed, and have been very involved with lots of different activities that the Langdon team have, have worked exceptionally hard to put together so that whilst people are at home, they can still see their friends, they can still engage in different types of activities Thank you, Nigel. So, it's been tough for Langdon. Cancelling the dinner was a big decision. It meant a huge loss in terms of fundraising revenue. But in terms of safety, it was undoubtedly the right decision. On an individual level, though, it's been a particularly challenging time for members, their families and their, and their support workers. To give you some insight, here's a film shot back in March, just 10 days before lockdown, featuring Langdon member Adam, his mother Shelley and his support worker Darren. I get up every morning and I look forward to coming to work. It's a, a real pleasure for me. Langdon means everything to me as a parent. It gave me my life back when Adam turned 16. He went to the college in Manchester. And then at 19, he moved into community here in Edgware. He's become much more independent since he's been living in Langdon. It opened up his world. And he does things that he wouldn't do at home. He's forging his own life. Himself. We are a very important part of their day-to-day -day life in, in terms of routine. It's going to have a massive impact if we all of a sudden Pear's house was to close down. It's, um, it's absolutely really upsetting to think that they, yeah, they wouldn't have us there. We want the best for these guys every day of their lives, and we, you know, we hope that it, it doesn't come to that. Yeah. I'm not going to be around forever. So this is the practice run for when I'm not here. Sorry. <laughs> I always do it. It's always, always, always. 
Tell them, stop crying. Claudia is a member of London in Manchester and she's going to talk to us about how she learned to play the guitar as a distraction during lockdown in Manchester. Having independence is like freedom. Because all my years I've been told no, or I can't, you can't do that, whereas now Landon are telling me, no, actually, you might not be able to do it in a normal way, but you can still, you can still function in, in life. Well, for a long time, before I knew Landon exist, it was a real struggle for me in Glasgow. I didn't have any outside help. I've not had any outside help since primary school. Having the support that Lisa and other staff give me gives me the confidence to know that eventually I can do it myself. My favourite part of living here in Manchester is having a Jewish life, because where I lived in Glasgow, it was next to nothing. It was no, no one my age. The tar has helped me during, during lockdown because it's given me something to, it gave me a distraction for when I'm feeling low, I can just come up and play the guitar and make myself feel happy again. Having friends is everything to me. Growing up, I didn't really have any friends, so it feels strange to have friends. I'm not used to it, but it's nice to know that someone's there when I need to talk to them and that I can be there for them the other way around. Lion King, yay! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm an awful, awful guitarist, but thank you there to Claudia. Um, next time I'm in Manchester, maybe I'll swing by and we'll have a jam. Do young people still say jam these days? I have literally no idea. But we're sticking with the musical theme now because Claudia is not the only Langdon member for whom music has been important during lockdown. Mark Butcher began broadcasting music on Facebook using Alexa. He'd get Alexa to play tunes and put it on Facebook and uh, play it out that way. And it's become a huge hit with his friends, so much so that he's now known as DJ Butch. I'm sure a residency in Ibiza awaits, but he might need a little bit of expert advice before that. One, but two tracks for you today. Feeling in a generous mood, DJ Butch. Give it to you lie. You can uh, be yourself and like express yourself in like music and stuff, and just like don't worry what people think when you uh, when you do it and dancing. I've always like watching uh, YouTube videos of people like DJing, and my aim is to properly do it with decks. So Mark, we've got a bit of a surprise for you today. What? We've got a real DJ who's here to show you some decks. Wow. Hey Mark. Hey. Nice to do some DJ. Yes, please. Let's do this. Yes. <laughs> okay, Mark. So what we've got here is the DJ RX2s, XDJ RX2s. And these are basically nightclub quality decks. do is we have to cue it okay so what we can do is we can <laughs> go through the song right and these are the waves of the song okay so we need to mix the two together okay. right so what we do is we go to the Nicki Minaj song so the Nicki Minaj song we play and what we need to do at the Nicki Minaj song is we need to fix the loop <laughs> Ha <laughs> 
Yeah, DJ Butch in the house. Lovely, lovely stuff there. And thank you to DJ Sergi for his teaching skills. So, when it comes to people with a learning disability, Langdon has six times more people in paid employment than the national average. And a lot of that is due to its employment services and its second-hand book business, New Chapters. Now, I've actually used New Chapters myself and got quite a few books from them, and I just randomly picked one up from the shelf earlier. Oh, just happens to be... <laughs> What a coincidence, just happens to be one that, that I co-wrote with my wife. It's uh, still widely available. Anyway, um, but like a lot of businesses over the last few months, New Chapters has had to adapt and change some of its methods of employment and its working methods in order to thrive. Have a look at this. The main function of New Chapters is for members to come in, gain confidence, gain work skills, build relationships that will take them forward in life, paid employment and personal lives. By the time they've been here and gone through a period of work experience and developed all of the soft skills that are needed, you see people that are flourishing, people that are confident, people whose communication has excelled, people who understand what an employer may be looking for. The members have responded really well to the changes that have been implemented. So there's been changes in work groups and bubbles. They've understood that because we work very closely with the support services to reinforce the information that needs to go out. During the lockdown period, the majority of our members were furloughed. So that has had some impact in the communication that we've had to maintain with them because they were very anxious about whether they'd be returning to work, whether their employment would still be there, and hearing new stories about layoffs and redundancies heightened their anxiety. One of the things we made sure we did was kept in communication with those members throughout lockdown and with the employers to give some reassurance that the stages that they were at, it was the same for everyone and kept them updated as often as possible. The loss of revenue would be monumental to London if new chapters cease to exist. The revenue that it generates keeps staff in jobs, keep members in jobs and those that would be normally disadvantaged at finding employment would struggle to find another route. A lot of our members have been given the reassurance by their employers that they will be returning to work before the end of the furlough scheme, but there are a few that are in limbo at the moment. If those members that are currently furloughed end up losing their jobs, they will inadvertently want to come to new chapters for employment support and to maintain some stability. We are giving them guidance on how to stay confident, stay motivated. What a lot of them have been doing to keep their minds occupied is to come to new chapters and to work and to help out here. The hopes for new chapters are that Langdon will see new chapters grow both in Manchester and in London, that the revenue that is generated will help us to be able to spread out, create more satellite sites, that the members will be able to create social enterprises for themselves and generate their own business ideas, so that Langdon as an organisation can be uniquely positioned in the world of supported employment. And now we're going to watch some of my fellow Langdonites being interviewed by Langdon's Chief Executive, Neil. What's your favourite restaurant? Oh, I have loads. So my favourite restaurant is the Curry Centre in Edgware. The Morano. J2 Sushi. Muscaboni. Italian. What's your favourite food to cook? Well, the most favourite and the most popular is cream caramel. So my favourite food is chicken stir fry. Steak. Cakes. How did you keep happy during lockdown? I have done packing um, as well because I'm very, I'm very advanced on packing. Keeping myself active by running uh, from my flat to near the Langdon office and back, so I'm keeping mentally happy and not too depressed. Drawing, colouring, painting. 
What do you miss about life before coronavirus? Um, going to the pub because then I can so then I can meet my friends. Not being able to go out to work. Right. Not being able to have a job. Everything. What do you like most about Langdon? Everything. Anything more specific? <laughs> no. The camaraderie. The relaxed, the relaxed atmosphere. All my friends and uh, the activities I do. What's your favourite Jewish festival? Passover. Hanukkah. Probably Hanukkah. How does Langdon help you? Giving you support. They make me more independent. Thank you, Marcus. Okay, Neil. We look forward to seeing you on film. <laughs> <laughs> and then they found Neil in a haystack with three orangutans. It was... Oh, hello. Um, so look, I support Chelsea. I'll just pause there to let a few of you shout obscenities and throw things at the screen. Right, okay. And I like to think that my support I'm shouting and screaming and occasional moaning at the team does help them in some way. But it is like nothing compared to the support workers at Langdon. They're a huge part of the family and they do an incredible job. Take a look. So I qualified as an occupational therapist in November and I started working at Langdon in January. I used to work for the NHS for 18 years but decided I need a change in my lifestyle and my career and when I was offered this job I jumped at it and I have not regretted it. I just wish I'd done it when I was younger. So I started Langdon in um, August 2017 and I was a support worker. It's been really difficult um, during Covid for both staff and members. I have one member who constantly keeps asking me when Covid will stop. Um, that she wants to go out, she wants to go on her adventures, she loves to travel, go by bus, by train, and at the moment she's at home most of the time. Covid has changed things dramatically, and we went from having a very varied uh, schedule, with lots of physical activities, meetups, to having to move everything online. My role has gone from arranging physical activities to Zoom activities ranging from quizzes, we have exercise every day, yoga. I have one member who has started new chapters during Covid because her previous job is not safe for her to go. They do ask when's it all over and I wish I had a wand that I could say tomorrow. It's just about trying to find that variation using what very limited um, options we have at the moment. Every time, for example, every time I walk in in the morning, I have just smiles on my face. I think when they see staff that they, they're used to and they know, they're just so happy and they do act differently. And if we have to change everything and they stop seeing staff, it will have a massive impact on them. My favourite part of the job is just to see the satisfaction and happiness on their faces. And I try to fulfil whatever they want to do. And it's just lovely to see them smile, laugh and joke. Langdon helps our members adapt. It helps to fill their schedules, it helps them to cope. The, the staff are the sort of backbone of, of, of this and you know, to be on hand and support the members in, in these challenges I think has been very important. So, keeping busy during lockdown. Personally, I've been quilt making and learning Yiddish, but what have Langdon members been doing and how have those activities changed? Here's Nigel again to tell us. So during lockdown, activities have ranged from online yoga classes, walking with our care team, socially distanced of course. So quite recently we had a sukkah and all of our members that lived locally went in, shaped a lot of an estrog with gloves of course, a pub night on a house party app and from what I hear, that's been really successful. I've, I've certainly joined quite a few members on House Party and, and a lot of fun is on there. Uh, we had a Bake Off, uh, which I saw plenty of photos of that also looked a lot of fun. So trying to be as creative as, as we can and, and with our members' input to put ideas together to keep everybody as active as we possibly can. Most years, Langdon has a big cycle ride to raise money for Langdon. This year, because of COVID, they weren't able to do that, so we've had to do something different.
just been for a run for this virtual velo. I'm feeling a lot fitter and healthier now. I'll be cycling to Finchley and once and hopefully Langdon will have lots lots of money to raise to raise and and thank you Nigel and Daniel to organizing it. Thank you everyone for participating in Langdon's virtual velo challenge today. Your support has been absolutely amazing. So, a lot of Langdon members use sign language. I mean, to be honest, what Jew doesn't use sign language? But over the last few months, Elissa has spent time learning how to sign to This Is Me from The Greatest Showman. Take a look. And now we're going over to Daniel from Brady, who is going to tell us how they were able to make summer camp happen despite the year of being COVID. At Langdon Brady, we support 12 to 19 year olds with mild to moderate learning disabilities and autism. This year, due to the effects of COVID-19, we had to change the way we run our usual summer camp. But this year, we weren't sure if physical summer camp could actually take place. Members weren't sure, parents weren't sure and families weren't sure. All this created a lot of uncertainty. But we were agile and we thought on our feet and we created a fantastic summer camp where members came here during the school holidays this summer and took part in fun and engaging activities where they grew in confidence, learned new skills, met people similar to them, all in a safe, stimulating and nurturing environment. As well as our physical COVID friendly summer scheme which took place, we also had a virtual scheme which was a huge success. We had a range of sessions including a Israeli soldier live from Israel talking to us about the army. We had a question and answer session. We had many fun and exciting activities. We engaged the highest amount of participants we've ever engaged in a summer program. We've engaged 70 people through our activities here at Langdon Brady this summer. So, Judaism, where do we start? Well, as ever, Langdon starts with its members. Their Jewish programme empowers members to practice Judaism however they choose, whether they're from a from background or whether they're from not such a from background. Thank you very much. Um, there's such things, they have such things as easy to read festival guides, which I think we know we, we could all do with. Uh, they're supported to keep kosher homes, and there are regular Friday night dinners at members' homes, usually on a Friday night. Here's Naomi to tell us more. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Al Netilat Lulav. So my name is Naomi. I'm 25 years old, and I have been a Langdon member uh, for three months. I became a Langdon member through Brady Club and then through going from Braid Club to the Olds Group and then joined the community. 
I live in the Langdon Bluston House. Um, we do a lot of um, cultural events, trying to um, make like a really good aspect of Jewish ethos by making um, everyone like involved with what we're doing. They let you be the, le the level of Judaism you want to be. I like Langdon because they support you to what, with what support you need. So I work um, four days a week and I um, get evening support when I come home from work to help me cook, clean and make sure I've got things ready for the next day. I really like Langdon because they are a very helpful organisation and have encouraged me to be a bit more independent. Mmm, lovely. Chocolate fondant, my favourite. I mean, the heartburn I'm going to suffer later, or you don't want to know, but believe you me, it was worth it. So, normally at these events, there are speeches. I mean, Neil Taylor can talk, can't he? Um, but this year, even though things are a little bit different, we're still going to have some speeches, this time from two members from Manchester, Avi and Yitzhak. My name is Avi. I, I live in the London community. I I am very busy. I working at Holiday Save. I empty the box and tackle the shelf. I am the talker for so people know what happened there. I I I so had a lot of friends. We had a lot of of meals and night out. Happy me keeping healthy and cooking good food and going out every day for a walk. <laughs> yeah, important for me to keeping to the rules so my family and me are safe. <laughs> Over lockdown I had to change my routine. I had a lot of free time. In August I'm starting starting to to the one voice in Timothy so has so had could change my ideas and planned amenities. Overall I will I so been doing a Zoom data show. I will help to running it. Thank you. Pictures says he a hired support worker coming up a long shift, cooking and 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 cleaning <laughs> just off their feet and in need of a sit down. The staff member looks as a greater and breathes a sigh of relief, realizing that they are with me next. I'm not claiming to have been comp com 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 completely easy, but it is hard to not notice this high of relief as I entered a spotless ap ap apartment and the uh, rumour of whatever dish I happen to be cooking roaming their nostrils. As I sat down at the table and we began to talk, I sensed this had I had outgrown this level of support, but 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 I was just interested in in getting my independence. Clearly, this was a start to the road of indep of independence that was already well on its way. I am two years into 
uh, working in the center of her majesty and becoming more and more trusted in my role. Uh, however, I uh, wasn't drawn there. Uh, unfortunately for staff, this meant that I told her uh, he, 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 he was closing gear stores. Uh, after a sh 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 chat with sport staff and social workers and a reassessment of my needs, mm, my support hours were cut dramatically. I, I, and my goals had clearly, I wanted to begin my way to independence. <laughs> with a bloody day by myself, which I took in Bournemouth last year, I began putting my savings towards driving lessons, which I attempted regularly. When August, I passed my test and recently got a car. In the future, I plan on another holiday that I'm saving up but to, to hopefully buy a house. Thank you, Abby, and thank you, Yitzhak. Now, it's been tough for everyone this year, and unfortunately many people have passed away, including, sadly, Langdon members who are deeply missed. You've seen and heard about much of the vital and frankly inspirational work that Langdon does and continues to do. You've also heard about the financial impact that the pandemic has had on the organisation. They want to carry on, they want to maintain the incredible high standards that they have done. But without your help, that isn't going to be easy. To Langdon's families, such as Sarah and her son James in Manchester, Shelley and her son Adam in London, Langdon is a lifeline and they and everyone else in the organisation are counting on your support. Thank you. My greatest fear for the future is, will James get the support he needs for the rest of his life? Because he'll always need support. I'm here and please God I'll be around for a long time. But additionally to me, he needs support. He doesn't want to be with me all the time. And that's the reason why he's in London. So James has Asperger's syndrome, high functioning autism. He was diagnosed when he was eight years old. He sees the world differently. So my biggest fears during lockdown was the fact that James's routine was going to completely change. And that is not good for James. Langdon made sure that he had staff consistency, that he still could get out every day, even if it was just for a walk. He was able to still come horse riding, which is the only activity that has remained consistent through the whole of lockdown and has been an absolute lifesaver. I feel very comfortable with James in Langdon because it's a Jewish organisation, because that's who we are. And James is comfortable in that environment. Because Langdon provides this support, he's developed and grown and evolved in a very positive way. I'm not going to be around forever and I feel he's got somewhere where he's always going to be looked after and that means everything to me. It's important for Langdon to keep getting the support it needs because it relies on the support and I guess it wouldn't be there without the support. And then we've got all these residents who are living semi-independent, wonderful lives, where would they go? What would they do? Langdon is James's future. You're waiting, you're waiting very patiently, Adam. 
Initially, when I heard about lockdown, I just went into panic mode. I had a family consult with my ex-husband and daughter, and we eventually uh, decided to bring Adam home. I think in the beginning, we were just all grateful to be alive, that we hadn't caught the virus. And Langdon rang every day to chat with Adam, so he got to speak with his friends on FaceTime, which was great for him. I went straight back to how my life used to be, of doing everything for Adam. And it was only when Adam went to bed at night that I could think about myself. It was a little bit like living in a pressure cooker, actually, because we were scared. And it was just a question of taking every day as it came. If I'm brutally honest, he only went back it after three and a half months because I couldn't do it anymore. I couldn't take the pressure. When the boredom had set in with Adam, angry and he just didn't want to be here. When I mentioned to him that he may go back to live at Langdon, he just threw his hands up in the air with joy and I thought to myself, well maybe he could go back and I realise that I'm one of the lucky ones. It completely made me appreciate and be grateful and thankful for what Langdon does. living his own independent life. He gets to choose the things in life he wants to do. It's the life that he will lead when I'm no longer here, which is my objective. I think the alternative for me and all the other families in Langdon is if Langdon's not there, actually, I don't think we have an alternative because I think the lockdown proved that I can't look after Adam full time anymore. And that's quite a difficult realisation and I think my sanity and Adam's sanity would be in question without Langdon. I am one of the lucky ones that I have Langdon to send him back to and no one will know how much I appreciate that. Probably all the families appreciate that but this year more than ever Langdon I know their funds are down, their expenses are up the bottom of my heart ask you to give this year more than any other year to make sure that Langdon is there for Adam for all the members today and tomorrow thank you as chairman of Langdon I, I want to thank each and every one of you that have donated that will be donating I invite you all to come and see the difference you make it's huge it really is huge and it means so much but I, I'll go along to a fundraising dinner and I, I I must confess that I will often have a predetermined figure in my mind of what I will be giving to that charity that night. I, I really ask everyone, please, please, to throw that number away. Whatever it was, tr please, if it can be doubled, the impact that will have on our members' lives. They've got to be able to look in the mirror every day and say, I am the best me. And, and if all of our members, every single one of them, are saying that, I feel that the team at Langdon are doing their job and doing their job really well. And now please make a donation by clicking the button here or here. Thank you. I don't know about you, but when I donate to charity, I like to do it to music. So while you're clicking on the donation button again and again and again, here's the Langdon Choir performing with the Zemmel Choir back in January.
The donating button will remain active for the rest of the evening, so if you haven't given it a press already, please, please do. It really is appreciated. So thank you very much to everybody who took part in the film and helped make them a really, really great job. I'll leave you with this one final thought. The Talmud says that charity is equal in, in importance to all other commandments combined. So if you have donated tonight, I'm sure Hashem will forgive you if once in a while you've coveted your neighbor's oxen. Good night. Thank you very much, goodbye and thank you for watching and I hope that we'll see you again in the very near future. Goodbye and good night.